The Fourth Dimension of Reality Hi everyone, welcome to Science Telly, the channel where we explore the fascinating world of physics and beyond. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the most mysterious and fundamental concepts in physics, time. What is time? How do we measure it? How does it affect our perception of reality? And is it possible to travel in time? These are some of the questions that we will try to answer in this video, so stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more amazing content. Time is something that we all experience every day, but we rarely think about what it actually is. We use clocks to measure time, we plan our activities according to time, we remember the past and anticipate the future based on time. But what is time, really? How do we define it? In physics, the definition of time is simple. Time is change, or the interval over which change occurs. It is impossible to know that time has passed unless something changes. The amount of time or change is calibrated by comparison with a standard. The SI unit for time is the second, abbreviated as S. It is a SI base unit, and has been defined since 1967 as, the duration of 9192631770 cycles of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperfine levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. This definition is based on the operation of a cesium atomic clock. These clocks became practical for use as primary reference standards after about 1955, and have been in use ever since. But why do we need such a precise definition of time? Why can't we just use natural phenomena like the sun's movement across the sky or the seasons to measure time? Well, the problem is that these phenomena are not constant or uniform. The Earth's rotation and orbit are affected by various factors like gravity, tides, climate change, etc. This means that the length of a day or a year can vary slightly over time. For example, the Earth's rotation is gradually slowing down due to the tidal friction caused by the Moon. This means that every once in a while, we need to add an extra second to our clocks to keep them synchronized with the Earth's rotation. This extra second is called a leap second. But even if we use atomic clocks to measure time, we still face another problem. Time is not absolute. Time is relative. This means that different observers can measure different amounts of time for the same event, depending on their state of motion or position in a gravitational field. This phenomenon is known as time dilation, and it was predicted by Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, there are two types of time dilation, special and general. Special relativity deals with situations where observers are moving at constant speeds relative to each other. In this case, time dilation depends on the Lorentz factor, which is a function of the relative speed between the observers. The Lorentz factor tells us how much time slows down for an observer moving at a certain speed compared to an observer at rest. The faster an observer moves, the more time slows down for them. For example, if an observer moves at 90% of the speed of light, which is about 270 million meters per second, their Lorentz factor is about 2.3. This means that for every second that passes for them, 2.3 seconds pass for an observer at rest. General relativity deals with situations where observers are in different gravitational fields. In this case, time dilation depends on the gravitational potential, which is a function of the mass and distance of the source of gravity. The stronger the gravitational field, the more time slows down for an observer in it. For example, if an observer is near a massive object like a black hole, their clock will run slower than an observer far away from it. Time dilation has been experimentally verified by various experiments involving atomic clocks on airplanes, satellites, rockets, etc. These experiments show that time dilation is not just a theoretical prediction, but a real phenomenon that affects our everyday life. But what does this mean for our perception of reality? How do we know what is happening at the same time in different places? How do we synchronize our clocks? And how do we communicate with each other? The answer is that there is no absolute or universal notion of simultaneity. Simultaneity is relative. Different observers can disagree on whether two events are happening at the same time or not, depending on their state of motion or position in a gravitational field. This means that there is no single present moment that is shared by everyone in the universe. 
everyone has their own personal present, which depends on their frame of reference. This also means that there is no single past or future that is shared by everyone in the universe. Everyone has their own personal past and future, which depend on their frame of reference. This leads to some paradoxical situations, such as the twin paradox or the grandfather paradox, which challenge our common sense notions of causality and free will. The twin paradox is a thought experiment that illustrates the effects of special relativity on time dilation. It involves two identical twins, one of whom stays on Earth, while the other travels to a distant star and back at a high speed. According to special relativity, the traveling twin will age less than the stay-at-home twin, because time runs slower for them due to their high speed. This means that when they reunite, the traveling twin will be younger than the stay-at-home twin. The grandfather paradox is a thought experiment that illustrates the effects of general relativity on time dilation. It involves a person who travels back in time and kills their own grandfather before their father is born. According to general relativity, this is possible if the person travels through a wormhole, which is a hypothetical shortcut in space-time that connects two distant points. However, this creates a logical contradiction, because if the person kills their grandfather, they prevent their own existence, and therefore they cannot travel back in time and kill their grandfather. These paradoxes show that time travel is not as simple as it seems. It involves many complications and contradictions that challenge our understanding of reality. However, this does not mean that time travel is impossible. It just means that we need to be careful and consistent when we deal with it. So, what have we learned in this video? We have learned that Time is change, or the interval over which change occurs. Time is measured by comparing one standard motion with another motion. Time is relative, not absolute. Different observers can measure different amounts of time for the same event, depending on their state of motion or position in a gravitational field. Time dilation is the phenomenon where time slows down for an observer moving at a high speed or in a strong gravitational field. Simultaneity is relative, not absolute. Different observers can disagree on whether two events are happening at the same time or not, depending on their state of motion or position in a gravitational field. Time travel is possible, but it involves many complications and contradictions that challenge our common sense notions of causality and free will. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about time. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you want to learn more about physics and other topics, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more amazing content from Science Telly. Thank you for watching and see you next time.